Welcome to Empowered to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Empowered to Grow. This is your host, Hanan Basha. I have, I'm, I'm smiling um, ear to ear <laughs> because we had such a moment of the universe uh, conspiring to send us people along our path that invigorates us just even before we started talking. Linda Bonner is with me today. Hi, Linda. <laughs> Hi, Anan. Oh, thank you so much. It is, isn't it? It's serendipity, like you just said. Exactly. So um, wow. why we're smiling, well, first of all, let me introduce Linda. Linda is a personal and corporate coach. She's also an author. She's a wellness uh, advocate and consultant, and uh, she's uh, based in New York right now. But um, we were talking about, I was telling her, so I'm Egyptian, I live in Qatar. She's like, oh my God, I used to live in Qatar. I'm like, oh my God, I <laughs> started the conversation. But it's, uh, it's amazing to have you, Lena, and it's amazing to cross paths with you, even if we're not on the same continent anymore. Oh, I know, Hannah. Thank you so much. It's just, yeah, it's, it's lovely to be here. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay, so I always start with this question, and I always say that I start with this question, but (laughs) that's the way it goes. Um, Empowered to grow. What does this phrase mean to you, and how how does it resonate with you? Such a beautiful phrase. And look at that. It's taken me right back from the moment to all the excitement to the... (laughs) Yeah, to really being centered and zen and here with you. And gosh, there's so much involved in, the, in, that, in this statement for me, Hanan. It's, um, I'm all about growth anyways. And I don't think we can do that to the best of our ability if we're not empowered to do that. And whether that's we empower ourselves or we, we, get, we start off with this sense of empowerment from others as well, be that the people we surround ourselves with, the coaches, like we were saying, the coaches that we choose to work with, who we choose to spend our time with do they empower us you know are we are we willing to do the work so there's there's so much in there for me in terms of empowerment it's really sometimes that's encouragement as well do I feel I can grow do I have the support that I need do I have the tools that I need Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and really feeling you know it is it's that sense of power like I can do this I might not be doing it really well today I might do it better tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I might have another setback the following day, whenever that is. But that's growth, right? Yep, that's it's true. not just one continuous trajectory at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's being flexible in that as well. So there's so many, uh, there's just so many words and phrases that spring to my mind when I hear your question and, and that fantastic statement. I love that. Okay, so coming from a place where you're empowered to grow, and yes. you're empowering others as well yes. to literally tap into their potential and overcome yes. all the challenges and everything else, which is the kind of the, the gist of what you do. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit more about your story. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so mine, and you, you already know a little bit of it already, right? And gosh, Anna, if we think about that statement and how it's applied to me over the past um, three decades you know I'm 14 now right but at the at the age of 10 11 12 I was a very smart young girl Hannah I'm very smart but for someone so smart I made some really stupid decisions and choices you know and I I guess my I want to say not really my struggle my journey really started at that young age where I decided I would be happier and I would be prettier as a girl if I was thinner. And that's, so this is the belief that I conjured up for myself, you know? Yeah. And I set out on that journey to get thin in the hopes of becoming happier and prettier. And I was very successful at the getting thin part. And so by the age of, you know, by the age of 13, I knew the calorie content of everything. I knew all about exercise and you all like the, the tips and the tricks and everything like that. 
to the stage where I was 21, I was diagnosed with anorexia, depression and an anxiety disorder. And so this, it's, it's interesting then because I did a lot of running away. And that's basically then what brought me to the Middle East. Yes, it was the fact that I couldn't get a teaching job at home in Dublin and there were jobs available for teachers in, in Qatar. And I said, yeah, great. You know, I'll, I'll get on a plane and I'll go somewhere different and everything will be fine. I'll leave mm -hmm. all of these problems behind me. But yeah. we don't do that, do we? Like we no, take all no, of our baggage. That's the plan, but that's not the outcome. Exactly, yes. And so I arrived in Qatar and I spent um, I spent five years working in Qatar and it was really interesting. That's where I met my husband, who's also a teacher. But that sparked another part of my journey as well, because that was where I started getting the professional help that I needed. Mm -hmm. So I worked with this incredible psychologist. I worked with a psychiatrist. I worked with a nutritionist. And, and these were all fantastic women in my life who really empowered me to make the changes and to grow. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Dubai with my husband and we were teaching there as well. And it's almost like I got to this next stage then, you know, and, and so I was, I was making changes, but I was, I was still stuck. So the, the tools and the resources that these fabulous other women, these medical professionals had empowered me with, they were still good, but I needed something else. Mm -hmm. And that's when I discovered coaching. I discovered NLP coaching in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a friend of mine was doing her training at the time. And she said, you know, Linda, will you be one of my guinea pigs? I, I, I need to practice. And I said, yeah. of course. <laughs> and I had no idea what it was about at all. Hard on it. <laughs> but coaching was the first time where somebody didn't ask me those why questions. They didn't set me back in my past. And it was very solution focused and action orientated. And I was like, gosh, this is this is energizing. This is empowering. This is okay. more tools in my toolkit to deal with different challenges that are coming up. And I went back, you know, after I, so I did my own training, I was still teaching at the time and I went back into the classroom and started using my coaching skills, my NLP skills. And my gosh, what a difference that made to the young people I was with, Alan. Yeah, you know, I can totally relate. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. And so the following year, we're heading into another academic year. My husband and I are driving to school. And I said, you know what, this is my last year. It's my last year full-time teaching. Mm -hmm. I love teaching, but I find something else. And, and again, I keep coming back to that empowerment because I saw as a history teacher. And as great as it is to, to educate young people on the skills of, you know, of, of history and of analyzing and you know, just get, becoming more inquisitive and writing essays and everything else, it's like there's more to life, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, there's how about we develop some other skills within ourselves and we learn to become more aware and we learn to manage ourselves better as we we navigate these periods of stress around exams and just being a young person or, or being a 30 year old or now a 40 year old right and so here I am we we did we did 10 years in Dubai and we always wanted to move to the US then as well and yeah, fast forward, we're in our third year in New York now, and I love it. Oh, okay. And you do, and you're an author as well. Oh, so yes, thank that. you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've just released my second book, which is a coaching book for adults this time, and it's called Just Three Things. And the reason I say it's a coaching book for adults this time was, is because when I left teaching that summer, and I kept in touch with a lot of my students who were doing their, their A-levels and their, you know, their other exams and everything else. And I kept in touch with one, one young girl in particular. And we were messaging back and forth because her summer hadn't been great. And there were different things going on in her life. And one of the last statements that she, that she said to me in one of her emails was, you know what, Miss, you should write a book. And I was like, she said, you know, like you've never told us exactly what to do, but you've supported us, you've empowered, you've given us different skills and different techniques. And so I'm walking around at Barnes and Noble in New York at the time, Hannah, and like on, on, yeah. on holidays. And I remember seeing this really, you know, like these cheesy cardboard cutouts yeah, of people yeah, beside yeah. their new book. And, yeah. and I said, oh, look at that, you know, eye roll. And then I'm like, oh, no, that's what I want. I want exactly. the cheese. Yeah. I want that sleazy cardboard I want it. cut out. <laughs> I want. I've got to write a book. What? What do I write? And yeah, that was the start of it. I 
and it's funny just going back to the start of my journey for a minute because when I was depressed as a teenager I there was nothing to read I was reading books that were written by by adults on their depression and they were fantastic but there was nothing there was nothing for like for a young person how, how do I how do I deal with this growing up in in Ireland where mental health is even at the time it was very much a stigma and a taboo thankfully that's getting better yeah it's yeah a different tool I love that I love that so okay then from from where you stand today yeah. what advice would you go back and impart on your 19 year old self oh gosh so much how long do we have <laughs> as long as you want it's an open podcast recording <laughs> This is great. Um, the biggest thing that stands out for me, because th this was one of the things that triggered it from the very beginning. It was, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. That's what I was continually chasing from day one, no matter what I turned my hand to, Hannah. If it was my, something as simple as a spelling test as a primary school student, to a secondary school student who was writing her own history essays, to what I saw, the figure that I saw, the number that I saw when I stood on the scales, how I felt when I looked in the mirror. I thought that it all, you know, my, um, my, my horse riding as a young girl as well, all had to be perfect. And so if it wasn't, if it wasn't that number that I was looking for, then I told myself I was, you know, I wasn't worthy. I was a failure. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. So, yeah, definitely. I think that that's the biggest Don't thing. chase the numbers then. Don't chase the numbers. What yeah. do they even mean? Yeah, that's true. Because again, and, is and this again is, is very much um, societal conditioning because, you know, we are told that this is the healthy, or actually that we're not told it's the healthy weight. We are told this is the ideal weight. Oh yeah. Your height that corresponds. These are the measurements that would make you attractive. And we yes. have failed to, or what, what we've been told has failed to recognize that we're all different, that um, we are healthy looks very different for each body type and each person. And healthy has a lot more dimensions than the physical body. There's the emotional, the mental, the spiritual yes. elements to it as well. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and isn't, it, isn't it funny that the, there's so much in that as well right yeah. the the understanding that just understanding the the science behind how all of all of this works as well and having the having the confidence being self-assured and having the self-esteem and recognizing having your own level of healthy self-worth as well mm -hmm. that i'm good enough that a number is not a reflection of me as a person That's and true. there's so much more to life right <laughs> so much more 100% true there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the other end of the spectrum, your 90-year-old self, mm. what would you like her to thank you for today? Oh, gosh. This is very emotional, man. My, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just for, for saying, I, I think for working on that perfectionist part, definitely, right? And we're, we're all works in progress. It, it's not yes. that my yes. perfectionist part is the one that's getting you hiatus or something, right? It, it's still there, but I manage it a lot better. So my younger self would definitely thank me for that. Because, mm -hmm. gosh, I feel like she's exhausted, the 19-year-old. You know, that, that younger me is like, oh, can we stop? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and it reminds me of one of the most powerful questions that I was asked by one of my coaches was, when are you going to stop running? And I said to her, you know, I just took that question at face value. And I said, um, well, I'm not, you know, I love my running. It's a huge part of all the work and my recovery that I've done. And, and it, you know, it's good for my mental health as well as my physical health. And she said, oh, okay, hang on. Let me, yeah, and I, I know why you're laughing. She said, let me rephrase that. Not physical running. I know. <laughs> yes, yes. When are you going to stop running from yourself? And I was like, sorry, what? And she said, you heard the question. And I said, mm -hmm. oh gosh, God, are we going there? Um, yeah. And so my younger self would definitely thank me for, for putting my hand up and saying, I need help. I cannot 
do this on my own. I am stuck. Yeah. I want change. I have no idea where to start. Mm-hmm. What, what does it even look like? That's true. Really need help. I think that's such a powerful question. What does it even look like? Because again, it is a very subjective view on what, yes. what you want out of your life, how how your life could progress, where it could progress to. Yes. And it's not it's not a dictated route. Because again, no. we've been conditioned by society that um, success and the, the trajectory of where we should move forward is, you know, you you grow older, you finish school, you go, you get a job. Yeah. Um, well, that university, get a yes. job, get married, have the kids, yeah. have the home, have all of this, and and then you wake up one day and it's like, but hang on a second, am I happy? Am I fulfilled? Is this is this all? And if this is not all, and that doesn't mean that I'm grateful and appreciative of everything that is already in my life, yep. but what more could I do? What's my untapped potential? And what makes me successful in my own eyes, not what society tells me? I love that, Hannah. I love it. And, and because I, I, I had to stop and ask myself these questions. Mm. And um, like close to four years ago, where I realized I just completed my doctorate degree. I've got about 20 years of corporate experience uh, or of corporate and entrepreneurial experience. Yes. I'm married. Uh, we've got our son. Uh, yeah. We're blessed in every way. But something's not, not right. Something, yeah. like there's something still that needs to be done. And it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate everything that I have done today. It just means that I know there's more to do. I know there's the untapped potential. I know that this is not what success looks like for me. Yeah. I love that. And it's it's funny, isn't it? Because for for me, and I think for other people out there as well today, it's it's the not knowing, right? The, you know, we're so grateful we I was I would say exact same. People, people would say, but what could possibly be wrong with you, Linda? Like your yeah. mom and dad are still together. You're super smart. You get excellent grades. You don't have it. Like you're going to get into uni, like wherever you want to go. And it's like, mm-hmm. that makes it harder because I can't pinpoint the thing, the yeah. tangible thing that I'm supposed to be able to change or recognize. I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that you says said it's that. just one thing. Exactly. That, <clears throat> excuse me. That you're thanking your younger self for for stopping to ask for help, and that your older self will be thanking you for for getting the help and for realizing yeah. that there's so more that you can do and you can offer. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> there's always more, right? And I, and I don't mean that in a in a greedy way or oh perfection, perfection. Yeah. But again, we're just this is all. It's a process, and and instead mm-hmm. of putting that pressure on myself to get it all done, it's Oh well, I wonder what 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 is next? Yeah. What's the next stage? What are the what are the, the next set of tools that I need to go even further? Sure. Yeah. So, Linda, you're on a stage, and you're <laughs> talking to tens of thousands of women, and yes. it's about being empowered to grow. Mm. What would be that last message you leave them with? I think it's. It's very much about, we can be our own worst critics, Hannah. Yeah. You know, and so recognize you're always, I actually just wrote this this morning. This is, I, I love that you're asking this. Don't, un, don't underestimate yourself because we do that, right? We overestimate our challenges. But we make them out to be these huge insurmountable things. And we think that we we underestimate what we're capable of doing. We forget that everything that we've been through, it seems to vanish. Like, you know, when a new challenge comes our way, pack up your successes, keep them with you at all times. Remind yourself of the things that you've come through and know that you'll be able to come through similar things again and bigger things, different challenges. You can do it. Any of us can. Sometimes we just need that little seed of faith. Uh, yeah I mean, as you can see that smile is because I was just saying the same thing I, I keep preaching the same thing and um, I say that we, we've got immense power within us it's just sometimes we, we forget that it's there we do. and and uh, as you said I think we overestimate the challenge that comes across whilst 
we are well, actually kind of forgetting that we've overcome worse or bigger challenges oh, this year. <laughs> so much. Of course I can do this. Yeah, that's the point. Well, I I love I love this. Thank you, Linda. This has been invigorating and enriching on so many levels. Thank you so much, Hannah. And just so beautiful, really. I would talk to you all day. You know, <laughs> I don't care about the time difference. I just yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's no time difference. We're just yeah. uh, on the other side of the continent. That's all. I love the whole. Yeah, yeah. But where can our uh, viewers and uh, listeners find you in virtual space? Oh, so I'd, I'm always, I love hearing from people, whether you've got questions or you, you're interested, you're curious about coaching, whatever it is, get in touch with me. You can email me, Linda at lindabonnercoaching.com. Visit my website, lindabonner.com. I'm on Instagram, probably the same thing. <laughs> Linda Bonner Life Coaching. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. Please connect with me and let's just continue the conversation and building this community of, of having open open discussions that's exactly it i love this well linda thank you so much thank you for sharing that oh, energy you. and your wisdom thank you so beautiful thanks a million anna thank you thank you well as uh, as we have been always saying um it's within you the power is within you your understanding of yourself needs to be augmented and needs to be um solidified when you feel like i don't know where to go next there's always different trajectories. There are always different forks at every path. And it's just a matter that it's not shameful and it's not looked upon and it's looked down upon or anything else where you just raise your hand and say, I need help. I need support. I need guidance. You're allow yourself that space, allow yourself that gift and uh, just wait to see what comes up out of it. Thank you for being with us. As always, I wish you love, abundance, and prosperity, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Empowered to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empowered to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.